What's up, Mets fans? Welcome back to the channel. And we have a really important discussion we had here, folks, because this stems from a report a couple days ago at the time of recording this, that being from our good buddy on the channel, Pat Regazzo, who does a great job on the Mets beat and an affiliate through Sports Illustrated. Links down below to his piece, as always. But as you see here, he came out with the following, saying that, yes, an industry source has Michael Conforto or Chris Bryant as the two most realistic options for the Mets post-lockout and adding to this lineup. So that's all I'll be breaking down in today's video. Every Team that there is to know about this report why exactly are conforto or bryant the most realistic fits for the mets potentially and so much more so as always folks make sure you stay all the way till the end video follow the details on my thoughts on michael conforto chris bryant the likelihood or unlikelihood of them actually landing in queens leading into this upcoming season and as always folks if you find yourself enjoying this kind of mets content and you want to see more great mets content like this don't hesitate from smashing that like and subscribe on sharing this video with your friends put on the notification bell all those great things thank you all so much for the continued support folks now jump right into today's video all right folks let's just dive into this one because there's a lot to unravel and it's exciting because when you look at the Mets this offseason what are they going to do post lockout we know priority number one seems to be that starting pitching they need to add more still there love Scherzer but you got to add more bullpen same thing especially after losing your southpaw specialist that being an Aaron Loop and then offensively the Mets would still like to upgrade but the priority isn't to the same degree the Mets can go into this upcoming season with their current offense how much success will they have again only time will tell but it's pretty obvious the Mets still want to add more there that's what reports suggested pre-lockout and that's what's showing now heading into hopefully post-lockout soon by the time we're recording this right now but when you look at this report in particular what do the Mets have in their outfield depth right is this justified to go after if you're going to go after a big bat it's going to be outfielder well yes it is because if you look in left field that's probably going to be Brandon Nimmo and I know he wants to play center field in his walk year because he's now Scott Forrest Klein as well but he's someone that has been injury riddled his entire career you put him in left field his more natural position that way you can have a stronger arm in center and eliminate the risk of injury for Brandon by having Sterling Marte as your center fielder which is what the Mets sign him for then in right field you have Mark Canna depth wise outside that you have clearly Nick Plummer that's really all you got that's going to have an immediate impact for the Mets this upcoming season the Mets want to add more so that's where I understand if you're going to go after another bat there's really only two options that being and yes Michael Conforto returning to Queens Michael Conforto or yes, Chris Bryant. And KB is the one that everyone knows the story by now. We've talked about him plenty. The Mets showed interest in him pre-lockout, so it makes sense why the Mets will be going after him post-lockout. And there's been a lot of contradicting reports about Chris Bryant, and really what it lies down to, in my opinion, and the opinions of many, is not necessarily on the talent himself, but rather, one, what is his market going to be, and two, how much is he looking for over what term? The Mets showed a willingness to go four or five years after player, that being in Javi Baez on a report $125 million offer. He took six years at 160 as an opt-out after two so the Mets didn't want to go there with Baez but they may offer a similar contract to someone like Chris Bryant he's going to want something more closer to a Marcus Simeon type at seven years 175 plus million but there's a good chance that may not happen for someone in his market already now at the age of 30 so when you look at how is the market going to be impacted post lockout with players only having so much time to actually sign and land with teams this is where it can benefit a team like the Mets that we've talked about time and time again shorter term high age AAV type deals again how realistic is it we're soon going to find out but to know that the Mets options right now are still very much with Chris Bryant versus him not even being a possibility which is depending on what reports you look at will suggest that yeah you kind of get the feel now that Chris Bryant is still in the mix he's still in the works and he checks off the boxes for what the Mets want versatility Billy Upper loves guys that play both infield and outfield he said it himself in a presser earlier this year yeah that's exactly Chris Bryant now if KB wasn't versatile I don't think we have this discussion at all but as Pat's report suggested and he's right KB is someone that could either come in right away at the third base position move someone like Eduardo Escobar at second base and then that makes Jeff McNeil more expendable in which he is on the trade block assumably or you go down the route if you do say keep your hands on Jeff McNeil at your second as your second baseman you can put Chris Bryant in your right field and use someone like Mark Canna as more of an ultra utility guy which does make a lot of sense in itself now can you land him on say a five year or less that's something that, again, we're going to find out, but the Mets are going to most certainly still be in that market. So Chris Bryant, we all know he makes sense. But then we have Michael Conforto. Can the Mets bring back Mike Scooter, as they love to call him, in the clubhouse? Now, he is someone that when you look at the Mets' options right now, Conforto, he never felt that realistic. It felt like that that bridge was burned. Is there any possibility of repairing it? Is this something that will even make sense for the Mets, to which I know many of you in the comments right now are either completely for or completely against? There isn't much of that middle. 
all. Now, if you guys know me, Michael Conforto has been my favorite player on the Mets in recent years, and he's someone that I'm always going to support no matter where he lands. But you have to look at the fact that, yes, what was reported the same day that Pat Ragazzo came out with this article an hour earlier from Mike Puma of the New York Post is really interesting saying maybe I'm reading too much into it. But yes, you can't talk about players still during this lockout, but that didn't stop Buck Showalter from slipping up and saying if Michael Conforto is here or not. So that tells you that Michael Conforto is still on the minds for the New York Mets. Billy Epler, Buck Showalter, they made it known in their pressers again that throughout the media since they started prospect camp that they have their eyes on the outfield right now. They're trying to round out and figure out what is best for them. So to know that Michael Conforto was in that conversation, that if, that big question mark, if, so maybe the Mets are in fact banking on potentially bringing him back. Now, long term, I don't see that happening because that's really the same exact reason why the Mets are probably going to part with him in the first place. But shorter term, taking advantage of the market, very similar to Chris Bryant, is where the Mets come in and they can be sneaky good at this because Michael Conforto's market is different than someone like Chris Bryant. He doesn't have the versatility, but he does have something that is important. It is age. He's a couple years younger than KB. He can play a really strong right field that I think is so underrated. Michael Conforto has been a borderline gold glove at plenty of times, especially throughout this past season. And what really hampered him so much was one, being in his walk here in 2021, not getting the extension heading into the year that Francisco Lindor got that clearly bothered him to what extent, again, only he knows, right? Or people around him. But two was his injury. Just like everyone else that had down years for the Mets offensively, they dealt with injuries. Michael Conforto had a significant hamstring injury, missed a good amount of time. You could see it affected him at the plate. Mentality wise, everyone was affected at the plate, but Conforto was especially Got in some good stretches for sure. And he's someone that everyone says, oh, Conforto's too streaky. He's not a star. Here's the thing. The Mets keeping Michael Conforto isn't for the idea of him being that star. He's not coming in. We don't need him to be a Daryl Strawberry here, right? We need him to be someone that can be consistent. And that's something that he has proven. And especially on shorter term, when you look at the market for him, how many teams are going to be willing to pony up potentially a long-term deal to someone like Michael Conforto? Again, we're going to hopefully soon find out once this lockout lifts. But point being, that market may very well not be there for a guy that only has so much time to sign with a new club. And how much interest does Michael Conforto have and changing everything about his life in a short period of time, needing to sign somewhere because of the lockout, holding so many things up where you can't negotiate deals, where he's a guy that grew up in the Mets farm. He met his girlfriend. I don't know if they're married now or fiance. Regardless, he met her through New York. Everyone that he has is based in New York right now. So does he really want to go somewhere else? Or is he going to say potentially take a shorter term deal, high AAV to stay with the Mets, approve a deal that makes so much sense. So that way you can have Conforto Canna really split time if they want, have Canna all over the outfield, but Conforto would mainly be your starting right fielder then you can have things based perfectly on righty lefty matchups of course Conforto being that big lefty bat that when he is on he can hit lefty pitching he has proven it in the past you can tell that between the hitting approach the Mets had which was abysmal this past season and also his injuries that that was a real problem for him especially trying to hit a lick against the lefties but he has proven he can do it he spreads the field has not just opposite field opportunity but opposite field power with the prettiest swing in baseball then you have Canna as a righty bat so you can get really creative with matchups something that I know Buck Showalter would definitely enjoy but shorter term prove a deal so that way if say he does have a great year he can walk if say one year deal or maybe a multi-year deal maybe there's an opt-out or something like that Conforto doesn't necessarily need to stay long term for the Mets to sign him high AV that's something that I think could be enticing for him and that's something that probably makes most sense for the Mets if they are in fact going down the Michael Conforto route I don't see it long term you'd have to imagine it's shorter term not even to the same extent of Chris Bryant I would be really surprised if the Mets went five years for Michael Conforto I think you're at least tops probably in that three-year range, maybe with an opt-out. Again, we're going to find out, but it's really interesting weighing those two markets respectively. So all in all, the Mets are going to add another bat this offseason. They are. They're going to add depth, but another significant bat. Maybe it isn't going to be a Kyle Schrober type. That's really a DH profile. Maybe it isn't going to be a Say Suzuki. Not that the Mets don't have interest, but rather say his market is massive. Almost every team in the league wants him. So it's really personal preference for him. And I've seen a lot with him wanting to go to West Coast or whoever it's going to be. Maybe it is going to be an outfield option for the Mets that they could still use depth there. That being one of Chris Bryant, who has all the versatility in the world. Or yes, Michael Conforto to bring him back to Queens prove himself from all the doubters that he had this past year and really hone in to be a significant bat for the Mets to kind of help to propel them because let's be honest Michael Conforto in this lab would make them better than they were currently there's no denying that if you can add that type of outfield depth that makes your team better it doesn't make it worse and I will take that to my grave 1000% regardless of what your opinions are about Michael Conforto 
all the advanced numbers will tell you that yes he's going to bounce back just fine in this upcoming season and it may be to a higher extent than you could have ever imagined for someone that's still very much in the prime of his career and is ready to thrive as soon as the season is set to begin so Mets fans let me know all your thoughts in the comments below how do you feel about Chris Bryant or Michael Conforto which one would you rather have without the Mets sign as that last significant bat to add this offseason whoever it's going to be let me know all your thoughts in the comments below as always and again folks if you found yourself enjoying this kind of Mets content and you want to see more great Mets content like this don't hesitate for smashing that like and subscribe on sharing this video with your friends put on the notification bell all those great things thank you all so much for the continued support folks and I'll talk to you real soon let's go Mets baby